just a few weeks ago, we saw Concord shut down, which by all accounts from us looking outside in, it did appear to be Sony's biggest failure. I mean, it, it was a live service game that had plans to go for quite a while with cutscenes being made and plans already in place for the roadmap, and then it was gone two weeks later. Completely shut down and Sony issued refunds. Most of us said, okay, well, that is probably the biggest failure we've seen from Sony. Well, now we're starting to get more details, and yesterday we had information around the budget for the game and some issues internally when it came to the development or the environment for development. And I got to tell you, some of this is uh, downright unbelievable, but we'll, we'll go over that here today. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Now, this information is coming way of Colin Moriarty. He did post a, a snippet of the Sacred Symbols podcast over on Twitter, and after viewing it, it makes sense why he did so, since there are some very interesting pieces of information here around the backstory for Concord, because most of us go, okay, how did this even get out the door in its current state, right? Well, this is from someone who did work on Concord, who reached out, and Colin was able to verify who they were, and he seems very confident in the sourcing here. So keep that in mind when I start throwing some of these numbers around, because the biggest one here, while they did enter Alpha State first quarter of 2023, apparently they had already spent $200 million on Concord up to this point. Now, we did see there were developers who posted from Firewalk on, on Twitter, and they had mentioned that the game was in development for about eight years, but early on, it wasn't a, a ton of people, like a massive team, but of course, they did ramp up over time to where now Firewalk is responsible for over 150, 150 people, and Apparently, it's, it's not a cheap studio for Sony to to keep going, which we'll, we'll touch on here soon. But the cumulative total here for the budget of Concord, and uh, again, this is the unbelievable part, according to Colin and his source, $400 million to make this thing. And he threw this in at the end. That does not include the price to buy Firewalk. See, I heard $400 million. I thought, you know what? Maybe that's the price of the the development, the budget over eight years and getting much more expensive exponentially. So towards the end of development, okay, that, and then the price of firewalk baked into that for an expense for Sony of 400 million, uh, maybe even then that seemed like it was stretching it, but no $400 million allegedly for the entire cost to develop Concord. And I'm, I'm trying to piece this together in my mind for how that's even possible because it is an unbelievable figure. I mean, Horizon from Midwest was just over 200 million. It's like $212 million. Last of Us Part Two, two $220 million. And the most expensive one that we've heard so far, and a lot of this came out of like Insomniac leak or when uh, documents were submitted to the court for Microsoft and FTC. Some of it was not redacted correctly, and we were able to see some of these figures. But Spider-Man 2 was north of $300 million, and they actually went over the budget to $315 million. So you hear those numbers, you see the quality of those games, and then you look at Concord, and you're like, how did, did this happen? I mean, when we're talking about the budget, and you look at Concord with the amount of people who worked on it, this is over on Moby Games, they're claiming 1,982 people with 1,972 professional roles being cited here, whereas something like Marvel Spider-Man 2, 3,812 people or 3,578 professional roles. So that does bring into question some of the, the budget, some of the, the money stuff that's being discussed here because the amount of people working on either one does not really match up to that, which I guess maybe you can look at it as, well, there there are plans maybe years out even for this thing with cutscenes that are super high quality and we have to prepare for this game to constantly provide content over and over and over again for years to come. And maybe that was part of the, the budget that's being discussed here. I Again, it's hard to say because $400 million for something like this is very difficult to fathom. Now, in order for the game to actually release and get to an acceptable state, they had to do a bunch of outsourcing, which that's not new necessarily. All these studios do use outsourcing to some degree, but it was sort of emphasized as in this was more than usual for Concord to get out the door as it was in a very rough state entering alpha and apparently onboarding, which basically how do we get new players in or how do we introduce you to some of these characters and monetization had not been worked on at all up to point of alpha, which monetization is, uh, I mean, you kind of develop the entire game around the idea of how do we extract money from the players along the way. 
and this eventually got to the point where it was a $40 price tag, so maybe that wasn't as necessary as if it was a free-to-play game, and also maybe why Sony did look at it as a $40 release and not like, oh, we're definitely going to make this free-to-play, because they really didn't design a good chunk of the game with monetization, at least in their minds at that point, so that's, uh, whew, that's, that's interesting. And then onboarding, if you jumped into Concord even during the beta and stuff, it, wa- it wasn't really welcoming to pretty much anyone. It was like, all right, go ahead, just hop in and, and play with some of these characters. There's no training mode at the time, which I believe they added in for the full release, but they kind of left a lot of that out and it did feel like it was sort of a, a second thought to them. And the, the thing, while this would be the biggest game Sony has ever released in terms of budget, I think the, the big driving force here is what is very concerning as it was Herman Holst, apparently who was a big, big champion for this game. Like, hey, this is this is the this is the game. We're really excited about it. Words like Concord is the future of PlayStation being thrown around. It's a Star Wars like project for Sony, which I will say what when I heard that, I said, you know what? Now it makes sense for things like that secret levels episode for that to exist. And apparently they're still going they're going forward with it, which they've already inked the deal, I'm sure. The contract's done, the episode's made, so Whatever, just go ahead and just go ahead and do it at this point. But when you start hearing about things that would do crossovers with video game and expand the IP outside of just gaming into more of a mainstream media climate, it does sort of make sense when you hear that, especially since there are so many characters that they were working to build up with these cutscenes every single week, give a bunch of backstory, and try to build their own little universe for Concord, which once these characters were heavily rejected by gamers all over the place, uh, what do you do then when you have this plan in place to keep pushing them forward? And something that was thrown around here is internally, there was, as they say, quote, toxic positivity vibe, which basically means it's a lot of a lot of yes men around who did not really push back or point out any kind of issues here and really portray some sort of criticism that could be viewed as, you'd say, constructive, but nothing to push back and say, you know what, maybe this part isn't going to work, or maybe this isn't a great direction for the game, and that could be just from maybe the people there agreeing with everything, or some concerns for themselves, some some mild bits of fear is like, can I speak out on this, or will I get in trouble, or does it make sense to... Because if you're just being told it's going to work over and over and over again, which is weird because you figure there would have been focus group testing who would have told you otherwise. Like, this is the, this is the weird part because most of us, when we saw that it was a hero shooter, were like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you go that route? I, I don't really want to play this. But apparently Herman Holst was all about this game, and it seems like a huge miss on his part if that was indeed the case. He's there pushing this game forward. This is going to be a, this, this is gonna work. We have to buy Firewalk because obviously this is a game that's going to continue going forward year over year over year, and then it's gone after two weeks. And as I mentioned, Kotaku uh, did sort of come in here and corroborate some of the story with the toxic positivity Uh, discussion, but they they did say that they feel like massive layoffs will be the most likely result of Concord's failure, including the possible shutdown of the entire studio, which sources tell Kotaku is indeed one of the most expensive studios in the PlayStation portfolio on a per head basis. And the obvious thing here now, the elephant in the room, is every other live service game that's coming up or every live service decision that was made before Concord is completely in question. Helldivers 2, that that that's done fine. Uh, that that it's proven itself. But you look at something like The Last of Us and how that was canceled. Would that have done better than Concord? I mean, yeah. Pro- it, look, it's very difficult to do worse than Concord at this point. If that budget is correct, the fact they're around for two weeks, everything. It's like that is one of the craziest game releases and then subsequent cancellations I've ever seen. But you look at something like Fair Games, people are already writing it off, and I I mean, after Concord, it's hard to be like, well, yeah, this is, this has a chance, this is gonna work. It's kind of in prove-it mode now for Herman Holst and this live service push that did kind of get started a while ago under Jim Ryan, so again, it makes you also question his exit from the company. It's hard to push back on any of that at this point, but one thing's for certain, Sony... They, they need help with these live service games if they are going to continue pursuing them. 
because it doesn't seem like Herman Holst is the guy to continue shepherding these things to market. It feels like he understands the, the single player stuff, as we've seen with Gorilla and what they've been able to accomplish over time. But not necessarily this the live service sector. If he thought Concord was it and that was going to be the future of PlayStation, oh, that, that came out and felt like a game that was the from the past of PlayStation back in the day when Overwatch came out and stuff. He might be behind the times. And look, it happens. I, I kind of feel that way myself at times. That's one of the reasons I have like Josie on the podcast because uh, she's younger and sees things much differently than a lot of us old people. So that's, it is that sense of have differing voices around you to try to make the best decisions going forward, which once again goes back to the the pot, the toxic positivity vibes. If that just, it sounds like it was a disaster all the way around and oh, the result kind of speaks for itself. But let me know what you guys think about this down below with the idea of $400 million being thrown around for Concord. It's again, it's unbelievable when I hear that number, but uh, he seems pretty confident with his sources. And I'm curious if any other outlets reach out to people at Firewalk or anyone they can at PlayStation to corroborate this number a bit more. Because if that is correct, who it was, the whole thing is way worse than even I imagined it could be. But let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.